Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The first lesson, Acts 4, 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Psalm 133. Oh, how good and pleasant it is when brethren live together in unity. It is like fine oil upon the head that runs down upon the beard, upon the beard of Aaron, and runs down upon the collar of his robe. It is like the dew of Hermon that falls upon the hills of Zion, for there the Lord has ordained the blessings, life forevermore. The Holy Gospel from the book of John. 
When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. And then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. And although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Sisters and brothers, sometimes this second Sunday of Easter, or the first Sunday after Easter, is called Low Sunday because prior to the pandemic, a lot of people went on vacation or just didn't show up for church after showing up either on Easter Eve or Easter Day or the great three days of Easter, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter, and felt that maybe they could take a day off. Well, Jesus doesn't take a day off, and as far as God's love for us is concerned, that love is with us every moment of our lives. So this is why we have a celebration of God's Word on the Sunday after Easter, or more appropriately, the second Sunday of Easter. There are various themes for this Sunday. One, of course, is the issue of doubt versus faith. Uh, doubting Thomas, uh, not present when Jesus appeared the first time, and then when he appears the second time, Jesus asks him to touch him and to see that he is a real person. He has risen from the dead. And Thomas makes his affirmation of faith, my Lord and my God. Another uh, aspect of this Sunday is reconciliation. Jesus came to reconcile the whole world to God through himself in the Spirit. And that's true. But one thing I would like to share with us today, and this sermon won't be very long, it's the appropriateness of the day in which Jesus appeared to his disciples. Remember that Jesus appeared to them 
not on the Sabbath day, the Jewish Sabbath was a Saturday, but he appeared on Sunday. It would be like Jesus appearing to us on a Monday, not a day where we normally go to church. Why did Jesus appear on a Sunday? Well, Jesus rose from the dead on the first day of the week, Sunday. And he also appeared to two disciples on the road to Emmaus that Sunday afternoon and later on uh, appearing to the disciples locked in the upper room. And when Jesus came back uh, in the Gospel of John, he didn't come back on the Sabbath day. He came back the next Sunday. So Sunday, because of the resurrection of Jesus, is a very special day. When I grew up, Sunday was a very, very important day for us. Of course, we would go to church, we would rest, we would do visiting. When I was a boy, we didn't do shopping because most stores were closed. The mom and pop grocery stores in our neighborhood were open, if they were open, for only about two hours a day on Sunday, just for people to get their emergency supplies. There were blue laws in place, and in certain areas, including North Carolina, there is a remnant of those blue laws, which uh, I understand prohibit the sales of alcoholic beverages in most localities until noon on Sunday. Why were stores closed? Why were uh, people asked not to uh, buy alcohol until afternoon? It was because our forebears in faith, if you will, felt it was important for people to have the time to worship God on Sunday. Nowadays, Sunday has become more of a catch-up day. We catch up on things we couldn't do the rest of the week. So we go our, do our shopping, uh, grocery shopping or clothes shopping, whatever. We can go out to eat in restaurants. And when I was a boy, some restaurants were open on Sunday, but not a lot. But we can go out and have fellowship, not only at one another's homes, but in restaurants as well. When I was growing up, we were expected to go to my grandmother's house on three Sundays, uh, Mother's Day, her birthday, and if Christmas was on a Sunday, Christmas, but also if Christmas didn't come on a Sunday, we also went to my grandma's house. Uh, and we had fellowship with her. We, we came because we wanted to have that fellowship. We also went to my grandma's on other Sundays as well and just sat and visited. In our culture now, with such a fast pace, even though we have more time to spend, presumably, Sunday has just become an afterthought or another day. Uh, we read the newspaper, if we have newspapers, or we read the news on the internet. We, have a, we sleep in and we have a late breakfast. We may go ahead and do some duties around the house or do some shopping. That idea of Sabbath, Christian Sabbath, has been lost. And I fear that with the pandemic going on, that we've lost more of that sense of Sunday because we're not able, for the most part, to have gone to church in over a year. It's crazy. But we know that life is changing. However, remember when Jesus appeared. Three of his appearances were on a Sunday. Not the Jewish Sabbath of Saturday, but Sunday. And the early church acknowledged that so that even Early, the early Christians went to the temple to pray or to the synagogues to pray daily morning and evening prayer. And to even worship on the Jewish Sabbath, they got together on the first day of the week, Sunday, in remembrance of Jesus' resurrection and that hope of life eternal that he's given us by that 
glorious miracle. And they gathered together for the breaking of the bread, which we call the Eucharist or the Mass or Holy Communion. I hope that when the pandemic gets better and we'll be able to reopen our churches, all of us will have that freedom and encouragement to come back to church where the body of Christ, which is called the church, gathers to recognize Jesus' presence in one another, to recognize him in the word of God that's spoken and preached on, and to finally partake of his most blessed body and blood in Holy Communion. And then after Eucharist, to be able to share the joy of the Lord's resurrection every Sunday with one another by visiting, by calling, and most importantly, by resting. Sometimes I wonder if our families and our individuals in our parish and in our Christian churches don't have enough time to rest because they don't take that time. Let me share with you a little story. I've heard of a man who shared his story. His name is Matthew Sleeth. He grew up in uh, the North Country, uh, not in New York State, but around the Great Lakes. He was a doctor and was an emergency room physician. He was on, all, on call all, all hours of the day and night. And he didn't really have time to rest. He was a Christian, but he really didn't practice his faith uh, publicly because many Sundays he was doing emergency surgeries in the small rural hospital where he was the emergency doctor. He really wanted to rest. He felt tired all the time. He realized that his marriage wasn't really the greatest marriage in the world. His children weren't really attending church and they felt like they were busy all the time. One time in his tiredness after a long day or evening in the hospital, he saw a Gideon Bible. He opened the Bible to the book of Genesis and he read the passage. Uh, on the seventh day, God rested. And he looked at that. And then he also looked at the Ten Commandments. And the Ten Commandments are interesting because the third or fourth commandment, depending on which version of the commandments you use, talks about the Sabbath. Keep holy the Sabbath, for God rested on the Sabbath. That is the only commandment that God says that God followed. I know God follows all the commandments. God is good. But God specifically states in the Ten Commandments, in the Fourth Commandment about the Sabbath, that God, God's self or himself followed that commandment. God rested on the seventh day, and God expects us to not only worship him, but also rest and have relaxation and have fellowship on the Lord's Day. The new Lord's Day is Sunday, not Saturday. Even though a minority of Christians worship on Saturday uh, during the day instead of Sunday, following the Jewish tradition. But Jesus rose from the dead and appeared his disciples three times on a Sunday to show us the importance of the Christian Sabbath, that we meet Jesus and one another in this whole uh, atmosphere of worship and fellowship and rest. Sisters and brothers, Matthew Sleeth, the doctor whom I mentioned before, realized that his life was a shambles because he did not have time to rest not time to praise God. So he gave up his job at the hospital. He said he couldn't be on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He started doing things differently. He and his wife started worshiping God every Sunday. 
and he realized that there were other people like him who felt drained and tired and couldn't really get a grasp of life. He and his wife started a team of people that did workshops, not on Sunday, but other days of the week, to talk about the importance of Sunday, God's day, and to talk about the need for worship, rest, relaxation, and refreshment on the Lord's day. He also wrote a book called 24-6 that God gives us six days in which to do our work, but he asks us to rest on the Sabbath, the Christian Sabbath, Saturday, Sunday, rather. You know, it's difficult for some people to worship God on Sunday. They may have a job that demands that they work on Sunday. Well, if you have a job that is that demanding, worship God on the day one of the days off that you have and make that your Sabbath. Know that God loves you and God wants to have a special relationship with you 24-7. But God sets apart Sunday or your Sabbath day so that you can have a special walk with him. Whether it's Sunday, the traditional Christian Sabbath, or another day that you choose because you can't worship and relax on Sundays. Sisters and brothers, this pandemic has caused a lot of confusion. As I mentioned, Sunday for many is just another day, especially since we can't worship. But please, please take the time to reevaluate your and my observance of the fourth commandment, to keep holy the Sabbath, to set it apart, to worship God in the community of faith if at all possible, and to rest, relax, and be refreshed so that we can take God with us the whole rest of the week from the first day, Sunday, through the following Saturday. Let me share with you a prayer from the Book of Common Prayer. It's the prayer for Sunday morning, and it's found in the Office of uh, Morning Prayer. Right one or right two. Here's the prayer. And please let this prayer, which is found on page 98 in the Book of Common Prayer, be your prayer and my prayer every Sunday so that we can look forward to the following Sunday where we can gather again, hopefully soon, in God's house, the church, as church, the body of Christ, the people of God and not only receive his word and fellowship through one another, but also receive Christ's body and blood in the Holy Eucharist. Let us pray. O God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed Sunday, blessed Sabbath to you and yours. And may God bless you not only this holy day, but every day of your life. Amen. Let us join our voices as we proclaim our faith. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate through the Virgin Mary and was made man. And for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at right, the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Brothers and sisters, peace be with you. Let us pray to our merciful Lord, saying, Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Lord Jesus Christ, you have given your church the gift of your Holy Spirit. May that same Spirit comfort and strengthen us as we proclaim your resurrection to the world. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. God of wisdom, teach and counsel the leaders of the nations. Fill this world, O God, with justice and peace. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. God, our provider, you have given us the pleasure of earth as a godly inheritance. May we use its resources wisely and always according to your purpose. I invite you to add your thanksgiving. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Righteous God, you are pleased when we live together in unity. May the people of this region be at peace with one another. May our work be rewarding and our needs be met. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Merciful God, you are a strong refuge for those in trouble. Protect all those who suffer various trials. Reveal yourself to those for whom faith is a struggle. Make all your people glad by the living hope that is found in you. May you add your petitions. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. God of life, may the dying and the dead rest in hope. Give us faith that you do not abandon anyone, even to the grave. Preserve us for the great inheritance you give us through the resurrection of your Son from the dead. Our Lord and our God, have mercy on us. Let us join our voices in the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us for, from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. On behalf of our clergy, staff, and leadership of all Saints Episcopal Church in Concord, we wish you and yours a very blessed, holy, and peaceful and joyful Easter season. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The blessing prayer is a three-part invocation with the final blessing. It's a solemn blessing for Easter, which can be used throughout the 50-day season of Easter uh, through the day of Pentecost. Please respond Amen to each invocation. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. 
Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you this day and always. Amen.